What's going on, Internet? NerdLocker.com here with this week's comic book reviews. I'm starting off with Batman Eternal 11. I do have to say, first glance into this, the artwork, I was kind of like, what? But the thing I really enjoyed about this is that it really has a Batman ink feel, like the Morrison, just the, the artwork and everything else, and being that it's written by Scott Snyder, um... I liked that it felt just like I was reading a Morrison book again. The artwork was very uh, complimentary to the story of that. Um, we pick up with Batgirl uh, trying to find a actor who was in Gotham at the time of the train crash. We get to see a lot of the Bat family and we get to see some old faces from Batman Inc. And like I said, I was a huge fan of that. So this was a really awesome issue. Um, I, this was kind of just a, a filler, I mean, to build up the story. We see Stephanie Brown kind of looking in on who her father is, the things she didn't know about him, and um, kind of what she's discovering. And we get to see a little insight on Catwoman. Uh, we also get to see Alfred talking to his daughter, which is pretty awesome. Uh, this wasn't as action-packed as previous issues, but it was still a lot of fun. And like I said, it really reminded me of the Batman Inc. run. So if you're a fan, you need to be checking this out. I'm giving it four out of five nerd skulls. All right, guys, coming here with my reviews for this week. I got to do The Witcher number four. And uh, while I read the last couple ones, and they felt more like a video game quest being set up, cinematics or whatever, kind of like the first couple issues, and then kind of like a little bit of that, had that feel to it, which was really cool and uh, not refreshing, but it, it was familiar to that kind of, it's a game. So that's what I wanted to read like. This one was like way more of a horror comic, which was cool because it's it's dealing with like, you know, ghosts and monsters and evil shit like that. So <clears throat> bring it on. And it actually was kind of like scary. It wasn't too terrifying. It wasn't like I needed to change my pants, but still pretty good, like uh, an easy feeling when you're reading this book. So that was pretty sweet dealing with haunted houses and all that crap. That's always terrifying. So um, if you're into that, this is probably going to be a pretty sweet comic, and you're going to think this is pretty sweet, because The Witcher is just a badass dude. Geralt is a crazy dude who has this really complex like, character to him. He's, he's a witcher, and everyone thinks a witcher is a certain thing, but he's kind of like proving everyone wrong in, in a cool, badass way. So I'm a fan of this book. I'm going to give it four out of five nerd skulls. You guys should check it out. Hey guys, Translucid number three comes out out of Boom Studios. Uh, this book is so fantastic. In this uh, third issue, we take another step into uh, the childhood of Cornelius. Uh, we see him playing around with one of his inventions, uh, with, with one of his, uh, I, I believe his, under, his older brother. Um, he then gets on the subway to go home by himself, which is kind of weird for a child, but he's playing with his toy and a group of bullies come across and destroy it. And then we see Cornelius go off on these guys. Now. Uh, we're seeing basically the why whoever Cornelius is, and I say that because I'm really not sure that uh, we're seeing a flashback into the life of the, na of the Navigator. I'm, th I'm thinking maybe it might be a twist at the end and it actually be Horse, the villain. Um, but I mean, this, this issue is mostly about codependence, much like The Killing Joke, which Claudio Sanchez and Chandra Eckert, of course, wanted to reach with this, issue, with this uh, series. So I'm giving a thumbs up for that reason. Uh, but of course, the artwork is absolutely great in this book. Uh, Adam Metcalf does the colors, and Daniel Bayless is doing the artwork. And this team up is great. It's so bright in, the, in, these, uh, in these pages. So I can't wait to read the next one. What happens at the end of this issue is absolutely crazy, and it's heart-wrenching. So I want you to check it out. I'm going to give this one four out of five nerd skulls. Check it out. Hey there, nerds. Jim here with my comic book reviews this week. And first up, I have MPH number two. Mark Miller's new book. Uh, if you remember my review from last month, I really enjoyed this, and to be honest, I'm impressed that it's, at least we have one and two months back to back. I like that. Um, that's not always the case with Mark Miller, so I'm impressed so far. I really like this story. Um, Roscoe ha heads back and basically takes vengeance, and he does basically what anyone would do if they were all of a sudden granted superpowers. And I think that's awesome because it's, it's what you and I would do. It's great. Because then right after that, he basically shares the excess and, and even the pills with his friends, Chevy and uh, his, his girlfriend Rosa, so they can experience what he's experiencing. And they lay plans for what they want to do in the future with these powers, the super speed, and basically how they're going to come to the other side and be uber millionaires. 
I'm very interested to see where this goes. I'm very excited to see that because it's like, yeah, I, I can't say I wouldn't think the same thing. Why, why wouldn't you? I think that's very interesting. Last panel, we see Mr. Springfield again. No idea where he's going with this. Very curious how he's going to come back. I'm sure he's going to thwart Roscoe in some way, but how? Is he, is he going to make him be good or is he going to make him be bad? I'm very curious how that's going to go. I really enjoy this book. I highly recommend you pick it up. I'm going to go ahead and give it four out of five nerd skulls. Hey, fellow nerds, Jasper here, and I just got done reading Future's End, Issue 7. I really enjoyed this book due to the fact that it was pretty much a slugfest. From Frankenstein fighting Black Adam in the Phantom Zone to uh, Batman Terry McGinnis fighting Mr. Terrific in New York City. One thing I did enjoy was the banter between uh, Deathstroke and uh, 50 Sue regarding uh, them trying to initiate or at least get Grifter to join their team. Uh, it's a very fun book. I really did enjoy the illustration and the uh, writing in it. Uh, I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 Nerd Skulls. Definitely check it out. All right, I got to read Wonder Woman number 32. It makes me sad reading this book because I know uh, the Azarello run is going to come to an end real soon, but it's really building up to a lot of stuff. Uh, we see the Firstborn with Strife, and the Firstborn's kind of like, I don't care who you are, you're all dead, I'm going to be the only god. Get all of you. I can't wait to fight Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman is amassing her army, the brothers of uh, the Amazon brothers and the sisters, and it's real. I just, it's really cool the way Azarello has done this story. Like it's just great, and I love the history that he's given this character, like this long established character. And there's so many things we didn't know about her. Um, I just, I think that's awesome, and I think it's great. And we're still getting to see Orion, and I guess the potential of more of the new gods. Either way, this is outstanding. I give it five out of five nerd skulls. You guys need to be reading this Wonder Woman. All right, guys, so I got to read Mice Templar number 11 this week. And uh, we've been kind of going through this uh, Messiah-like dude, Carrick, uh, coming into his own, kind of realizing his power, his potential, his, his role within this world, which is pretty sweet, um, being that he's like the savior of his entire race and you know, no one believes him. In this issue, it's kind of coming to a head. Everyone's getting together, trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do. And he doesn't really know if he wants to step up to the plate, which is kind of interesting. Uh, he doesn't feel like he can. It's a really cool like, look on his character, because so far he's been able to prove himself. He's totally like been a badass, and now he doesn't want to do it. And it's kind of shitty, but the way they deal with it and the way it goes through is actually pretty sweet, because he does come into his own. And it's pretty awesome. So I'm going to give this 5 out of 5 Nerd Skulls, because it's just a great book. And it has a, such a great feel, and it's so epic that everyone needs to be reading it. Hey guys, this week Alex Nita number seven comes out, which as you know is one of my favorite books that is coming out of Image Comics specifically right now. Uh, in this issue, Alex and Nita are both invited over to his grandmother's house uh, for dinner uh, because his grandmother basically wants to see what would happen when Ada meets Daniel, her own android. Uh, when they come over, of course Ada has to pretend that she's not sentient or jailbroken, um, but Alex's grandmother sees right through that and calls her out on it. And then uh, what happens at the end of this book changes everything what, that I thought this book was about, basically. Uh, in the first six issues, you're rooting for Ada to become sentient and really understand the world. Uh, you want Alex to have that companion to show her around and, and make her understand how the world works. Uh, you're really rooting for that, for that couple. Um, but in this issue, it really makes you wonder, is being sentient the best uh, thing for our robots? So I want to give this book five out of five nerd, nerd skulls because Jonathan Luna, Jonathan Luna artwork is, of course, great. Um, he's doing the writing with Sarah Vaughn, and they're just a great team up. So I want you to check it out. Five out of five nerd skulls. So next up, I got to read Star Wars Darth Maul number two. One of the reasons why I really love this story is it's picking up from the events of the animated series that is now currently on Netflix, which I highly recommend you check out. I really enjoy how they're delving more into Darth Maul and his team up with the Black Sun and um, where they're going with this and their fight against the Emperor Darsidious and Count Dooku. This one, it's clear there's more to it. And what I, what I really like with these sort of extended storylines is we already know the Emperor's story. We know Count Dooku's story. There's things in there. We know how it's going to end, but I want to see how it gets there. So Darth Maul, 
is uh, colluding with Mother Talzin, and they're basically trying to take out the Emperor and Count Dooku. And it's very cool. We have more Knight Brothers showing up, fighting with Darth Maul. There's a lot of intrigue going on, and I don't know who is more devious in this one, Mother Talzin or Darth Sidious. We know who wins, but we don't know how they get there. So I'm, I'm very curious to read more. I really enjoyed this book. It's a really good Star Wars one. Check it out. Four out of five nerd skulls. All right, guys. So I got to read Thor, God of Thunder, number 23, this week as well. And, whoa. Uh, <laughs> the Last Days of Midgard has been an incredible story so far. Uh, jumping through time, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Thor in the present trying to save it from an evil corporation that's actually an evil monster who hired another evil monster to beat him up, and they totally go down, throw down. It's awesome. Uh, but also in the future, with Galactus and old Thor and his granddaughters and all this crazy stuff, and he pulls out a weapon that you kind of forgot about, but it was there, and he totally is using it, and the ending is really interesting, and I'm excited to see what happens with this, with this next issue, uh, just kind of tying everything up and wrapping everything up. Uh, because it's been such a good ride so far, and this definitely did not disappoint. So I'm going to give it 5 out of 5 Nerd Skulls, and it's still one of my favorite books. Solo books out there. Hey guys, The Wicked and the Divine comes out this week. That's number one, written by Kieran Gillen, artwork by Jamie McKelvey. This book was absolutely fantastic. I did not expect it to be this good. Uh, I was not really a huge fan of Young Avengers, uh, this, the, which the team up did that as well. Um, I'm loving the, the new Iron Man book that's coming out. Uh, which is great, but I didn't really like Young Avengers, so I wasn't really sure if I was going to like this book. Uh, the story is basically every, I can't remember the, the amount of years, but 75 years, let's call it, uh, these gods reincarnate, 12 gods reincarnate into uh, modern day, basically, at that time. The, this first issue opens up in 1923 and shows them basically killing themselves in order, so that, in order to make them reincarnate into another time. Um, which I thought was interesting, obviously foreshadowing what, for what is to come. Uh, in 2014, they are basically pop stars, the 12 uh, gods. They've all got really crazy powers that you don't really see a lot of in the beginning of this book. Uh, they just talk a lot about it. But our main character is Laura, and uh, the first god she meets is Lucifer. And uh, yeah, this book was awesome. A female L Lucifer, really tricky. I, I mean, uh, really reminded me a lot of Loki. Um, and I, I want to see where this book goes so much because in the last few, the last few pages reminded me a lot of, uh, of things like Scanners and some of the great horror films that I've watched uh, in, in my short time. And I got to suggest it to everybody out there. You got to read this. I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls. This team up is great. Check it out. So I got to read Unity number eight. Big fan of this book from the start. Matt Kent has done a fantastic job writing this. We are now in with the Armor Hunter storyline, which, if you saw my review last week, I was a little trepidatious about Man of War, Exo Man of War, being in too many books here. They're obviously talking about him in this one, but he's not really in it. So I like how I thought they were going to overexpose. They didn't. They focus on Livewire trying to recruit someone to join the team to help them in their fight against the Armor Hunters. They've seen the results of what happened down at Mexico City, and they're just basically trying to combat it. And you have Ninjak and Jalad doing their own thing, and I like that. The team isn't team yet. They're basically out doing their own thing to recruit. I think it's a good storyline. I think it's showing us, damn, this is gonna go places. I highly recommend you check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one four out of five Nerd Skulls. All right, guys, so I got to read New Avengers number 31, uh, the original Sin tie-in this week. And this time-jumping adventure has just been uh, getting a little crazier and uh, just a bunch of questions have been asking. That's essentially the last page, like what the hell is going on? Um, it's, it's the one thing that keep, keeps going. But there's enough in it, in the actual story, as it's going on to kind of keep you satisfied and keep you wanting more. It's, it's addictive. It's really good, though. And I like what they're going with it. And, the, the, the alternate future they jump into, I totally thought it was going to be something else, and it turns out to be pretty awesome. Um, but I do want to know what the hell's going on. I do feel a little confused, um, but I'm not complaining. So I'm going to give it three and a half out of five Nerd Skulls, because it was a little lacking in the full development. But either way, it was awesome. So check it out. So I got to breathe... So I got to read Brain Boy and the Men of Gestalt, number two. 
This one I'm still not entirely sure about. Uh, we have Matt Price, he's on a plane, he's flying to go take care of business. And uh, I really did like this comment. He makes a comment uh, with his powers. He hates the astral plane and he's flying on a plane as he's forced to get on the astral plane to fight other telekinetic powers. I just thought that was funny. I don't know if anybody else got that, but I enjoyed that. Um, the, the story's okay. It's entertaining, but it's not great. It, it kept me there, but at the same time, it's not one that I think I would put in my pull box. I think if it was a slow week, I think I'd pick it up. So I'm only going to give this one three out of five Nerd Skulls. And again, that's not saying it's bad. It's just not the best book I read this week. So it, I'll leave that up to you. All right, guys. So I got to read Original Sin number four this week. And whew. Oh, man. I was really stressed about this, this whole issue this whole series, like what the hell's going on with this? That last page and the last thing was like, whoa, dude, that is not what I saw coming. But um, it's actually totally not what I saw coming. Uh, totally, I don't want to give too much away, but it takes a good little twist, a good little turn, and it ends with a solid last page. It's kind of like, all right, what the hell's going on? Hopefully we get some answers. Like a lot of tie-ins, a lot of things are, that are going on right now are just a shroud of mystery, and it's, it's cool to have that in a book and not be spoiled about anything. But I also want to know more, a lot more. Uh, but pretty much uh, everyone's kind of not trusting anyone at all. And the one dude who you don't want to trust at all is trying to figure things out. So hopefully next issue we get a lot more and the tie-ins kind of explain a little bit more. But that last page, the last issue, not that big of a deal anymore. So that was sweet. But I'm going to give this four out of five nerd schools. So I also got to read Daredevil number four, and we pick up from the events right after three. Matt Murdock has obviously made a deal with the Shroud, and is he going to hold up his end of the bargain? He does. Sort of. Which is interesting, because now Matt is sort of left in the dark, so to speak, and that he doesn't know exactly what the Shroud's doing. And is he colluding with the owl? Is he using the owl? What is going on? There's a nice twist at the end that shows it's not what you would think. And Daredevil uh, has to save the day, but again, it's not what you think. And even at that, I'm not entirely sure what, what Matt was thinking is true. I, I just don't know, but I really like how they leave that open-ended and they leave it for you to decide. I believe this is the end of this storyline, so we'll get Matt into more problems. But I really enjoyed this one for its simplicity and its nice little twist. I would go ahead and recommend this. I'm gonna go ahead and give it three and a half out of five Nerd Skulls.